Welcome to the weekly press conference with head coach James Franklin. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, and then we'll go to Rich Scarcella in the Zoom. Missed you guys. Why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to lead uh, with with sending our thoughts uh, and prayers to to Mike Hart uh, and his family. You know, obviously, uh, Big Ten through and through as a player and as a coach, both at Indiana and Michigan. Um, obviously, you don't ever like to see anything like that, and uh, we truly wish his family. Um, Mike, as well as the running backs and the players at the University of Michigan, uh, our thoughts. So uh, hopefully uh, he'll be healthy enough to be involved in the game on Saturday. I hope I get a chance to see him before the game. But if not, wish wish him nothing but the best. Um, kind of moving on, obviously not going to backtrack too much. We, we met last week, um, but getting into the, the Michigan game uh, and Coach Harbaugh, um, obviously got a, got a ton of respect, uh, for coach Harbaugh, for the university, for the program, for the venue. Um, and obviously I think they got a lot of things planned, uh, for the game as well. So should be a great, should be a great, um, atmosphere. And I know our guys are looking forward to it and preparing for it. Um, but but you know this is why you come to to a place like Penn State to to play in these types of games. Um, kind of when you get into them specifically, you talk about their offense. They have co-offensive coordinators uh, in Coach Moore and Coach Weiss. Coach Moore's been on staff and been promoted. Uh, Coach Weiss, um, you know, is is come from from the Ravens. You know, they've had a They've had a you know, obviously a unique unique situation with the Ravens and and his brother being the head coach there. Been a bunch of uh, staff uh, kind of back and forth between those two organizations, but got a ton of respect for what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, extremely efficient. I think they do a great job of staying on schedule. Um, first down is obviously a, a huge factor for them in their offense. Uh, and it's going to be a challenge. You know, they're able to run it. They're able to throw it. Um, obviously, their offensive line was considered to be the best offensive line in all of college football last year. Uh, on top of that, they got, you know, maybe the most productive back in, in college football over the last couple of years. Uh, they got wide receivers that can make plays, tight ends that make plays, and a, and a young and talented quarterback who's leading the nation in completion percentage. Uh, we know all about Blake Corum. And not only from what he's done at Michigan, but also um, obviously right down the street here, um, you know, played his high school ball in the Baltimore, Maryland area. Ronnie Bell, um, you know, has been has been doing it for for a while and been successful for a while at wide receiver there. J.J. McCarthy's obviously the new face, but extremely talented. Kind of already talked about him, and then you know they're similar to us. Got a deep and talented tight end room and. And although, you know, they've had some injuries there, uh, you know, number 86, Shoemaker is playing really well for them, playing really well for them. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, Jesse Minner, who I've known for a long time, uh, comes from a football family. I've known his dad for a long time as well. Um, another guy um, that spent time with the Ravens, um, you know, last year was at Vanderbilt and now is, is back, you know, is, is at Michigan. As the defensive coordinator, you know, also, um, you know, got a, got a situation there. When you look at what they're able to do defensively, it starts up front with Mozzie Smith, who's a guy that we recruited extremely hard. Um, that kind of, to me, anchors their defense. Uh, their middle linebacker, number 25, we're really impressed with. The production of Mike Morris at defensive end is playing at a high level. And then their corner, DJ Turner. Um, the thing that's Maybe uh, I don't you know know if surprising is the right term, but with the with the departure of their two defensive ends last year that were so well thought of um, for them to be able to pressure the quarterback and sack the quarterback at the rate they've been able to do it after losing those guys has, has been impressive. Uh, but it'll be a challenge, multiple fronts, um, talented 
ta talented secondary as well. They do a really good job scheme-wise of putting their players in, in position to be successful. And then on special teams, again, consistency. Um, Jay Harbaugh, Jay Harbaugh running the special teams has, has moved, you know, over to the defensive side of the ball this year was tight ends last year and is doing a nice job. They have, you know, pretty good personnel as well. Obviously, AJ Hennings, a young man that we recruited heavily, uh, that's their punt returner and kick returner have been successful. Uh, their kicker, Jake Moody and their punter, Brad Robbins, um, are all playing at a, at a really high level. Their punter is, is punting as well as any punter in the country right now. So really in all three units, you're going to have to be prepared and, and ready to play. Um, you know, we're going to have to deal with their personnel. We're going to have to deal with their scheme and, and we're going to have to deal with it with the venue. So uh, look, looking forward to the opportunity to open up to questions. Start with Rich Scarcella, Reading Eagle, and then we'll go to Mark Wogan, Rich. Good afternoon, James. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned Michigan's pass rush. What makes that effective? And do you feel like you're better equipped to handle that pass rush this year and why? Yeah, I, I think we're better equipped, but I also think, you know, they've done a good job of making people one dimensional. So then you're getting in, you know, maybe not obvious passing downs, but maybe situation where people, um, and I don't know if the score is always, you know, mandated that some of their games it has, but, um, you know, people have gotten away from the run game because they've gotten down by too many points. And whenever you're up um, by a certain margin, then you're going to get more, you know, passing opportunities, which also creates more opportunities to rush the quarterback and pin your ears back. So that plays a factor into it, how the score goes. Very similar to, you know, their offense and how they've been able to manage their offense over over the last couple of years and and be able to stay on schedule. If you're in third and short situations or or getting a bunch of yards on first down, it helps manage that, you know, for for their offense and for their defense and, and what they're trying to do. So, um, yeah, I think we're 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 better equipped to do it from a personnel standpoint, but I also think we're better equipped to do it in terms of of not getting away from the run and being one dimensional kind of stip, sticking with the plan mark Wogenrich, all penn state then frank bodani hi james how are you doing today good how are you good thanks appreciate it um with the offense this year do you feel like you have a number one receiver this season and if not are you comfortable not having that yeah i think we got we got three guys um that we feel, you know, are that, and obviously Parker Washington, um, you know, obviously, you know, Keandre, you know, who's coming back and Mitch. And then there's some guys also that are, that are coming on. Now, what we see in practice and what we've seen all summer is one thing. Uh, and I understand the question, um, you know, the production and doing it consistently in games. And that's, that's at the quarterback position. That's at the wide out position. That's at tight end. That's at protection. That's all of it, you know, consistently uh, making the tough catches or consistently creating separation or consistently making um, the throw, all, all those things kind of factor in, but we, we think we have three guys and, and possibly more that have the ability you know, to be what you're describing uh, but obviously, we we got to get it done on Saturdays. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. Then Mike Gross. Hey, good afternoon, James. How you doing? Good, good. Do you think you are a better football team now than you were two weeks ago with the bye week there? And if so, how specifically do you think you guys have improved in that time? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think we've done a good job of doing self scout. And really kind of have a good idea of, of who we are, what we are, what are the areas that we need to work on, what are the areas that we need to build on. Um, obviously, been able to take some time, you know, going good on good uh, at practice uh, and then being able to take some time and, and get a head start on on Michigan. So I think all those things are valuable. Also, the time off. 
Uh, also, the time off uh, for the players, not not so much for the coaches. I wish I wish we could get a little bit more time off for the coaches, uh, because also being rested physically and mentally is is important as well. And the timing of it, you know, is pretty good. We haven't always had great timing of the bye weeks, and this one this one's been pretty good for us. So um, managing that, one of the things we did this year that is a little bit different is our third practice. We practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That Thursday practice in the past had been more of a GA and non-travel practice from a developmental standpoint, and this year we did that, but we had everybody out there, all, all the players, um, we're able to get a, a head start on Michigan, you know, with the coordinators and GAs and things like that. So we did add an extra day of meetings and an extra day of, of practice, although it was a jog through uh, more from a mental perspective than anything. So um, and then I think on top of that, I think how we have played our guys since the beginning of the season, um, our depth is in a better position, you know, not only that it's been in the past, but also. Uh, how it's been from the beginning of the season. I think there's less question marks that you guys have as media and that we have as coaches um, of of our depth, you know, uh, overall and, and at specific positions that, that you guys had a ton of questions about in the beginning of the season. Mike Gross, LMP News, and then Donnie Collins. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, my colleagues have anticipated my questions uh, perfectly, but uh, let's go with this. Um, Michigan has kind of settled on one quarterback now. Does that make them, uh, it doesn't make them easier to prepare for, I guess, because he's played so well, but uh, talk about the challenge of playing against him and what he brings to the table. Yeah, I think it'd be different if they were playing both quarterbacks all the time, but it was really one game you know, the guy played the majority of the reps in the next game, the guy played the majority of the reps. So you had a pretty good sample size of, of who those guys were, um, especially obviously, you know, the other quarterback who, you know, played an entire season. So I think the biggest thing um, for us and the biggest challenge for us is what I've talked about. They, they've been great on first down. And when you're able to run the ball and be as efficient as they've been on first down, um, they're able to stay ahead of the sticks, takes the pressure off of their quarterback, takes the pressure off of their offensive coordinator um, because they're in favorable down and distance situations a lot. And that's a credit to their players. That's a credit to their coaches. Um, and I think a big part of it is obviously, you know, not only, you know, Blake Corn, but really their running back room. They've, they've had a lot of production out of those guys. So it'll be uh, it'll be a real challenge for us. Um, but this quarterback, I've been impressed with his poise. Uh, he is very poised back there. Obviously, he's been very accurate. And he can make all the throws on the field. He's got a very strong arm. He's got, you know, real good what you know people describe as arm talent. And I think part of his poise is his confidence in his athleticism. He feels like he can stand in there, and if he gets pressure, that he runs well enough to run away from most people um, and avoid hits. Able to run for a first down on the sideline and step out of bounds, uh, but keep people people on their heels. So that that confidence that comes from his accuracy, that confidence that comes from his athleticism, and that confidence that comes from staying ahead of the sticks uh, is what I think makes him and their offense challenging. Donnie Kahn, Scran Times Tribune, then Ben Jones. How are you doing, James? Good. How are you, Donnie? Doing well. Uh, how, how do you evaluate the play of the offensive line in, in the first five games when you went and looked at it? And what do you want to see them do in the next seven or so to get themselves to another level? Yeah, I think it's like every position, um, you know, it's it's consistency. There's been flashes of really good things that 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 everybody's been excited about. You know, our our staff, you know, our team, uh, the fans, um, you know, I think there's been there's been times where, you know, we've been really happy with with how it how it's looked and, and how productive we've been. There's other times where we got to be more consistent and clean some things up, whether we're getting different looks or different fronts or pressures or run throughs. 
Um, and it's like I've talked about before, those are opportunities for, for big plays as long as we can identify those things, communicate those things, get a hat on a hat. And I think that's one of the things when you when I look at Michigan, you know, last year and this year, um, it's their ability to get a hat on a hat, you know, consistently. And that's there's a lot of things that go into that. Obviously, your your players on the field, your personnel, some of the things you're doing scheme wise, some of the things you're doing at the quarterback position. It's all of it. But um, for me, it's it's consistency, you know, making the big block, um, you know, getting a hat on a hat, but also now, you know, blocking with a mentality and trying to finish people so guys can't fall off the block for a run of four yards we're finishing a block so now a ball carrier can turn a four yard run into an explosive an explosive run um but overall i've been i've been pleased i think we're taking steps in the right direction i think that group is is starting to play with some confidence um and i think we're doing a good job of again you know, staying balanced for as long as we possibly can and, and being, um, you know, a little bit more unpredictable. I think there's sometimes there's some calls that, that happen and, and people may question why you're doing it. But at the end of the day, it's about execution. Um, but it's also about keeping people on their toes. If you can run in predictable passing situations um, and be uh, efficient and effective that's what you want to do and vice versa you know so try to try to be able to mix those things in as much as we can to keep people uh, honest ben jones statecollege.com then Corey geiger hey james how's it going good how are you i'm good i'm going to test your psychology degree a little bit here i think um when you talk about the goals that you want to accomplish at penn state you guys have established over the years that you can beat the teams that you quote unquote, you know, should more often than not based on talent and execution and programs and things like that. When it comes to these games that you say, you know, this is why you come to Penn State, these are the same sorts of opponents that are getting in the way of what you want to do long term. What is your relationship like over years and years and years of being at the same place in these games with these games where you go, I kind of know it might come down to these two or three weeks every single year. I mean, how do you kind of grapple with that knowledge, knowing that you take every week seriously and obviously you can't get to big games without winning the ones before them? Yeah, I think that, that's a good question. And I think, you know, that's that's where it's not just the art, you know, or the science. It's also kind of the art because I think your point is a good one. We know that these types of games each year um are critical and we're not the only program in this conference or in this country um that is that is in this in this situation um but i think your point that you made is also a good one is if you put all your eggs in these games baskets um then you you, you can put yourself in a situation where you don't handle the ones before that you that you need to that everybody wants to look past um so that's kind of the fine line of managing those two things, doing everything you possibly can to get yourself to this position and then also, you know, being strategic as you possibly can to take advantage of these opportunities when they come. And that is, um, you know, one of the things, Ben, that I think you guys have heard me talk about for a long time. That's where not only is this Saturday critical in terms of how we manage the game uh, and how our players go out there with the confidence um, and swagger to make the plays when they're needed. But it's also the thing that, you know, we've talked about in the past is it's all of the progress that you can make the other 364 days a year that add up all those all those little wins add up all year long to put your team in the best position to be successful consistently on Saturdays in in both games that you've described um and that's where I'm pretty excited which I think you guys know um you know Pat's been been great with with those types of things he's been he's been really good um, at recognizing those things without me even having to say anything about it. And that's, that's been, that's been great. I would say even, um, all the way up to, to the president and, and the chair of the board as well. Um, you know, whether it's, whether it's Matt Schuyler, the chair of the board, or whether that's 
Dr. Ben Deputy. It's it's all of it. And I think that alignment that you've heard about uh, is critical. Now, again, that's all great. Nobody wants to talk about that. We want to talk about Saturday. So at the end of the day, we got to do everything we possibly can to put ourselves in a position to get to this point where we are 5-0 and with a top 10 matchup on the road in a tough venue. Um, and we got to have an unbelievable week of preparation. We got to make sure that our, our players are approaching it the right way. I got to make sure that the staff is approaching it the right way to put ourselves in the best position to be successful on Saturday. And it's going to be a challenge. But to your point, it's just, this is why you come to a place like Penn State to play in these types of games. Um, but we got we got to find a way to, to be successful. There's no doubt about it. Go Corey Geiger, DK Pittsburgh Sports. Then we'll open it up to the room here. James, how would you evaluate your linebackers so far? And how important are those guys going up against a team that, you know, is going to run the ball a whole lot? Yeah. You know, I think, as, as you guys know, we, we felt pretty good from an experience and from a production standpoint, you know, about the two outside linebacker positions. But I think we probably feel even better because the depth that we've been able to create with Abdul you know, behind Curtis, I think has helped us. So I think everybody in the room would agree. I don't mean to speak for everybody in the room, but I think, you know, most people would agree, you know, that we're in a better position from that standpoint than we were coming into the season based on what we've been able to see and, and know up to this point. And then the biggest question mark was at, at Mike Linebacker. And and both Elsden and Kobe have played a lot of football now. They're no longer first-time starters. Um, when you get to this point of the season, you know, that's no longer, um, you know, something that is discussed um, or accepted to be talking about, well, it's your first year starting. You know, we're, we're past that point of the season. So they will be challenged in this game when you talk about the run game, the variety of the run game, um, the diversity of the run game, you know, the play action pass off of it uh, and the talent as well their talent on their offensive line tight end and running back positions um have done a really good job so i i think we're we're in a much different position and a much better position than we were to start the season and those guys continue to gain confidence and gain experience and we're gonna we're gonna need those guys to play really well on saturday uh, based on what we've all seen on film mark thanks for your time you too mark uh, how would you evaluate uh, Sean Clifford's play through five games? And can you speak to the importance of having the best version of him going against this caliber of opponent in this environment, all of those things you talked about? Yeah, I think obviously, uh, you know, fair question. Um, I think, you know, kind of like we've talked about the offensive line, um, Sean has, has done some really good things. I think there's some plays that that he would like back. Uh, there's no doubt about it, um, but I think overall the way he has managed our offense, whether it's the passing game and the protections, whether it's the run games, uh, run game and getting everybody on the same page in terms of how we're IDing the front, uh, and then it's making those you know four to six plays a game that that you need your quarterback to make. You know that that the media or the fan or the coach would watch the game and say, you know, that was that was a critical play in the game that that Sean was able to make for us. So um, I think, you know, his entire career and his entire season uh, kind of keeps building up and leading up to, to moments like this and opportunities like this. And um, but, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt there's some plays that he would like back. There's some plays that we would like back. But, you know, him going out and playing well on, on Saturday, uh, really all of our positions and all of our players, you know, to to win on the road against this type of opponent, we're going to have to play well. I don't think there's there's any doubt about that. And that 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 also uh, includes our quarterback. Tyler. Hey, James, <clears throat> pardon my voice. Um, Salim Wormley was on the phone uh, Zoom with us today. And uh, looking back at missing all of last year, I'm curious, what has his return brought to your offensive line? And what have you been, what has he proven in these five games to you and your staff? Well, I think the biggest thing is for us, you know, we've essentially the way we view him is we got a starter back, you know, and and I know on paper it may not necessarily say that. But my point is, is going in the last year, we had him penciled in based on how he had played in camp as a starting offensive lineman, offensive guard for us. Um 
so to lose him for the entire year um you know was significant and then to get him back as a year older a year wiser a year more experienced um and for him to gain the confidence you know in 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 how he's played up to this point is extremely valuable i think you know whenever you're getting a guy that your your team views as a starter your coaches the players view as a starter back um is extremely important and he's smart and he's powerful um and he's and he's played at a at a pretty high and and consistent level so um you know these games specifically against teams like michigan um you know and these types of opponents obviously we're going to have to make plays on the perimeter on both sides of the ball but you know being able to battle and compete uh, and win up front is going to be going to be really important on, on both sides of the ball. Sorry. Hey, James, how are you? Good. How are you doing good? Thanks. Uh, is there a mentality shift that kind of has to take place when you play a really physical team out of the bye week when you haven't taken the field in 13 days, whatever it is, and, and you kind of know they want to run the ball, they want to control the game, they kind of want to punch you in the mouth? Yeah, I, I think, you know, that's where having a mature football team is is really important. Um, that's also where, you know, having a Tuesday and Wednesday practice in pads where you're where you're banging is important. And there's a fine line, right? Because, you know, you you want to make sure during the bye week that you do enough to to get their legs back um, so that we can be as fresh as we possibly can be on Saturday, but there's also if you're not careful, you got to you got to take care of those guys that bang every play as well, and and get them uh, feeling good and their bodies feeling good. Um, so it's all of that. But having a mature football team doing enough of that stuff on Tuesdays and Wednesdays is is really important. Um, and there's that fine line between understanding how physical we're going to have to be uh, to win this game, uh, but also you know putting our players in the best position to be as fresh as they possibly can be so we can be explosive and fast and violent as well. Um, that's, that's where the experience matters. And that's where, you know, having, you know, some exp experts on our staff that can weigh in on those things are important too. Daniel. Afternoon, James. How you doing? Doing well. Uh, you mentioned uh, when you're talking about the wide receivers, uh, you said Keandre is, is coming back. Uh, Will you have him Saturday at Michigan? And then overall, just coming out of the bye, how do you feel uh, this team has done with its health and avoiding some of those injuries? Yeah, as you guys know, I don't get into a whole lot of specifics and details with with injuries. I, I know um, where I've learned over nine years that, that you're going to ask anyway. Um, but we're hopeful to have you know Keandre for Saturday. We'll see how this works out. It's sometimes it's challenging, even if I wanted to answer the question on a Tuesday because it's still very early in the week. And then what was the other part of your question? Yeah, overall health. I think knock on wood, we're we're in we're in a pretty good place. And I think part of that is is how we have managed practice. I think that is part of how of our guy how our guys have done a really good job of taking care of their body, um, hydration, nutrition, all those things have helped. As you know, we've had a bunch of discussions about nutrition as well and how that factors in, um, and then our our ability and our willingness to play guys. You know, um, the amount of reps that are too deep has gotten this year. Um, you know, is significant and there's value in that. There's value in those guys gaining experience to create depth, but there's also value in getting your, you know, your ones out and, 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 you know, putting them in the best position to be as, as recovered and as ready to go the following week. Yeah. Hey, James. Hey, Neil. Um, you kind of made your point clear about opening on the road in the big 10 and, and also the Auburn game, but do you think those two experiences will serve you uh, well this weekend. Yeah, I think it, it helps, obviously, because, you know, we've 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 been on the road before in in tough environments. I mean, obviously, this is this is going to be one of them. But um, the experience matters, um, you know, the understanding kind of what it takes to, to win on the road. Um, there's value in that. But at the end of the day, all that matters is, is what we do Saturday. And 
um, having our guys ready and prepared for what that moment is going to be like is is important. Um, and I do think all your past experiences as an individual and as a player have a factor in that. But again, at the end of the day, you know, we can't take any of the points or any of the, the, the interceptions that our defense got or any of those things to the game on Saturday. We'll, we'll take those experiences with us and the confidence that comes from it. But at the end, of the day, go execute at a high level on this on this Saturday and in this environment against these players and against this scheme. Audrey. Over here. Um, James, Hakeem Beeman is somebody that obviously you guys mentioned you thought he was going to be a starter last year, but the way he's played these last five games, what are your thoughts on that? Because he had a pretty nice game two weeks ago at this point. Yeah, he's playing He's playing well. He's a guy that we've had a lot of confidence in you know, for a long time, and Hakeem has grown in, in a lot of ways. Um, I've gotten, I think, very close with Hakeem and, and his mom. Uh, we've been through a lot of experiences together, and – you know, ultimately, I want what's best for Hakeem, and I want what's best for our program. And I think those two things uh, can be complementary pieces. And um, you know, and when you're talking about a team like this, and you're talking about um, you know winning up front on the offensive side of the ball, you know, with the O line and the tight ends, and with the defensive side of the ball, with your D line and, and linebackers. You know, uh, having depth and having talent and having the skill up front that is necessary is going to be critical. And Hakeem is a, a perfect example of that. Um, so, you know, just like we talked about the quarterback and, and other positions, you know, we're going to need Hakeem to play well, you know, on Saturday. And I can say that about pretty much every position uh, and every player, you know, on our team. T. Frank. Hey, James, over here. Hey, T. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, you talk a lot about balance on offense, and that's been a major theme this year. Um, going, It's really been a theme every year. We're just doing it a little bit more right now. Right, right. And that's yeah. the ideal, right, is to have balance on offense. And usually we talk about it run versus pass, but balance within one of those facets, especially passing, how do you feel you've been there in terms of balance of attacking different parts of the field and being able to, you know, threaten a defense in multiple ways? How do you feel you're, you're balanced in that sense? Yeah, I think we, we have to be more productive um, in the explosive, you know, plays in the passing game, you know, as, as if you kind of look at us historically, we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, we're probably, um, we probably wish at this stage that we've had a little bit more production. We're going to need that on Saturday. We're going to need more production down the field in the passing game. And that could be, that could be shots that are actually thrown down the field, or that could be making somebody miss and breaking a tackle and creating the explosive play that way. Um, we lacked we lacked the explosive play in the run game last year. We get able to get that back. We were extremely explosive in the pass game. You know, the the you know this this past season, uh, we need a little bit more of that on on Saturday. So now that that'll be this Saturday, that'll be moving forward. That that's going to be important for us. So uh, to your point, I think that that's what you were asking. Um, you know, you obviously like to throw for a higher percentage and all those types of things as well. Uh, but being able to create explosive plays in the passing game is going to be really important for us this Saturday and moving forward. Last question to Ryan. Hey, James, right here in the back. Way back. Hey, Ryan. Um, hey, James. Uh, so you guys, since you've taken over, you guys are two and five after the bye week. Um, what kind of challenges can the bye week kind of present for you guys? That includes the Illinois game last year. And also, what are you kind of doing to make sure you guys don't maybe come out a little flat on uh, Saturday against Michigan? Yeah, kind of things we've already talked about. I think, you know, there's been discussion about studies that we've done in the off season. We added an extra day of practice. Um, staffing wise, we're able to to be in a position where we have analysts and people that are able to get ahead for us and stay ahead. Uh, I think that's helped. And then also, you know, like we talked about, about, you know, this point of the season, about how we've rotated and played guys to, to be as healthy and as fresh as we possibly can be. Um, depth has played a, played a part in that, you know, in the past. So, so all those things, we spent a lot of time, you know, talking about it and studying it in, in the off season and talking to different programs and different coaches and different sports scientists and 
strength coaches and, and all those types of things to to put ourselves in the best position to go win this Saturday. Um, but for me to sit here and say that that we didn't spend time studying it and looking at it, that that, that wouldn't be accurate. We, we spent a ton of time in the offseason looking at it. Um, and obviously the opponent factors into it. Um, but but we spent a lot, ton of time on it and the things that that we've already covered and addressed in, in this in this press conference as well as all season kind of answers you know most of that question. Thank you coach.